In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph a tan function with some transformations applied to it. So we're going to take a look at y equals 2 times tan 3x. So we can see that the 2 means that there is going to be a vertical stretch. Now we also see that the period is going to be pi divided by b, and our b value in this case is 3. So it's going to be pi divided by 3. All right, so think about what the original tan function looks like. So I'm going to draw this over here. So we know it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and these are our asymptotes. It goes through 0, 0, negative pi over 4 and 1, and then pi over 4 and 1. So something that looks like this. So <coughs> because there is no um, horizontal phase shift and there's no vertical displacement, we can still plot this initial point at 0, 0. Now, because the period is pi over 3, we know that the distance from the asymptotes is pi over 3. Now, because there has been a horizontal stretch, but it's still centered around the y-axis um, at 0, 0, we need to take our period and we need to half it, which gives us pi over 6. Now, the reason that we need this point is from 0, 0, the distance from this central point to one of the asymptotes is going to be pi over 6. And then the distance in the negative direction will also be pi over 6. So this will be negative pi over 6. Now, there has been a vertical stretch of 2. So instead of at pi over 4 and then 1, we're now going to be at the halfway point between 0 and pi over 6, which is actually pi over 12. And then we're going to graph this point instead of at 1. It's going to be stretched by 2. We're going to graph it at 2. And then same thing, we're going to go negative pi over 12, and we're going to go negative 2. So this gives us a graph that looks something like this. So because it's periodic, we're going to draw another cycle. And I can see that there's four squares to represent one period. So I'm going to draw the next asymptote over here. <coughs> and then skip counting. I have 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, and then 3 pi over 6, which is then pi over 2. So this is our center point here. And then we have the vertical stretch of negative 2 and positive 2 points. And then we can connect. So we can see that our x-intercept occurs at 0. And then it occurs at every pi over 3. So it's going to be n times pi over 3, which is really our period. And n is going to be an integer. Our y-intercept, we only have 1, and that's at 0. <coughs> now our domain, it is all real numbers except where there is an asymptote. So we need to take a look at where the asymptotes are. So the first one occurs at pi over 6. So x cannot be pi over 6, which is over here. And then the next asymptote occurs at every pi over 3. Now if you forget, we can actually transfer this to be 2 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 6 to help you kind of visualize this a little better with a common denominator. So pi over 6 to 3 pi over 6 is the distance of 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. So we start at pi over 6 for our first asymptote, and then the next asymptote is going to be pi over 3 away. And we can get each subsequent asymptote by multiplying the pi over 3 by n. And n is an integer. Our range is going to be all real numbers because it goes on and up, up and on and on down. <coughs> and then finally, our equation of our asymptotes, this actually is where the domain doesn't exist. So we said that x can't be at pi over 6 plus n pi over 3. So therefore, our equation of our asymptotes is x equals pi over 6 plus n pi over 3. Remember to include x equals because this tells us that the asymptotes are actually vertical as opposed to horizontal. 